Life Practice Community. Lovely. Okay, and here comes my cat. Oh, I'm going to come to a comfortable shape. Oh, this is my lion. My lion cat princess. So bring your body into a comfortable shape. Lengthen up through the spine. Keep the palms face down if you want an intention of groundedness. Roll the palms face up if you'd like an intention of openness. And then allow the breath to move through the body. So let it flow all the way into the lungs, the chest. Exhale, empty. Big breath in. Big breath out. Just take a couple more inhales. Couple more exhales. My question for you today is, do you make decisions with your head or your heart? Do you make decisions from your head or your heart or is it a little bit of both? You can let that journal prompt take you wherever it takes you. We're going to journal for about five minutes. I chose this journal prompt because earlier today, someone shared this prompt with me in our YTT, and it just really inspired me writing and coming to some conclusions much further than the question itself. So we'll take about five minutes to let that take you wherever it goes.
take about one more minute to just journal whatever comes up. And then I'm going to invite you to just come to a, um, a seated shape on your yoga mat. And what we're going to do is, uh, you know, just come into cross like a shape for the beginning. Drop the right earlobe down towards the right shoulder, and you can just land the right palm on the side of the skull, stretch through the neck. This is one of my favorite stretches in the world because I carry so much tension in my shoulders, which is actually quite connected to the heart chakra. We were learning about the heart chakra today in, in my yoga teacher training. Let's take a few more breaths. And then lift the head all the way up. Drop the left earlobe down towards the left shoulder and you can land the left palm on the skull. We'll just stretch through the neck. And then let's lift the head all the way up. Drop the chin to the chest and do some little circles with the neck. And then we'll bring the head all the way up through center. Bring the soles of the feet together. Let the knees open wide. You can support your knees with blocks if you like. And just lengthen up through the heart and then hinge forward. So this journal prompt about making decisions with the head or the heart, it really resonated with me today because I think there's this part of me that still feels like I wonder if I made the right decision coming to Bali. And it feels like it's a very head and heart decision for me, right? My head feels like Dubai is the right place for me business-wise and my heart feels like Bali is the right place for me soul-wise. And then this journal prompt started me thinking about one of the things that I miss the most about the UAE, which is all of my stuff. I miss the stuff that filled up my apartment there. And then as I continued to journal on this prompt today, I realized, you know, I think that I miss my stuff. but I have a suitcase full of stuff here in Bali that I haven't even opened from, from the last time I came from Dubai. And I have things inside this cupboard to the right of me that I haven't used in like the entire six months that I've lived here. I actually have a ton of stuff that I need to get rid of and I have very little belongings at this point in my life. So then I started wondering, you know, what does this stuff symbolize for me? It must be more than this stuff, right? It must be something else.
And I was thinking, you know, maybe the stuff just symbolizes the identity and the life that I created for myself in the Middle East that I haven't just created here. And maybe it's just clearing a space for creation. So anyway, all that journaling, all that focus on the head and the heart really got me thinking. And so I wonder where that journal prompt took you. Stay here for like five more breaths. And we'll just come all the way up. Bring the knees into the clothes. Give the body a nice little hug. We're going to leave the left foot where it is. And then cross the right ankle onto the left thigh. Push the palms in towards the mat. So you're getting this, um, it's like a variation on a pigeon stretch. And so you can just stay here. Or you might lay or lower the left shin down so the knees are both stacking. This is called um, fire log pose. See if you can just bring yourself into stillness. But I want you to look down at your right toes and your right toes should be in dorsiflexion. So what that means is that your toes are drawing back towards your kneecap. to protect the knee. So if the knees are in plantar flex, if the toes are in plantar flexion, then there's potential for the knees to get injured. And I actually met someone who told me they injured their knee through doing that. So just make sure you're drawing the toes back towards the kneecap and dorsiflexion. And if you're with where I am with the knees stacked, then you might start to bring your heart forward. Just seeing where that leads you. I don't normally read poetry in this class, but I feel um, like reading a poem today. So this poem is called Dear Human by Courtney Walsh. Dear human, you got it all wrong. You didn't come here to master unconditional love. This is where you came from and where you'll return. You came here to learn personal love, universal love, messy love, sweaty love, crazy love, broken love, whole love infused with divinity, lived through the grace of stumbling, demonstrated through the beauty of messy up, messing up often. You didn't come here to be perfect, you already are. You came here to be gorgeously human. Flawed and fabulous.
and rising again into remembering. But unconditional love, stop telling that story. Love and truth doesn't need any adjectives. It doesn't require modifiers. It doesn't require the condition of perfection. It only asks you to show up and do your best. That you stay present and feel fully. That you shine and fly and laugh and cry and hurt and heal and fall and get back up and play and work and live and die as you. It's enough. It's plenty. Let's take one more breath where we are. And then I'm gonna invite you to just switch it up. So you're gonna lift all the way back up and then bring your left foot to cross over your right knee. Draw your toes back in space. And maybe you stay here, maybe you come into your fire lock by bringing your knees to stack. I'm not switching sides because um, My cat is like lying on top of me and I don't want to move for it. So I'll tell you a story about this cat. She was not my cat originally, like most animals are not ours originally. <laughs> and I had no intention of adopting a cat. No intention of adopting a cat, right? And then I started fostering a cat, this cat, <laughs> in the start of the pandemic. And, um, and this was unconditional love for me. And when I left Dubai, I thought I was going to have to leave her there, but she's lived nine lives and she's been able to take her way around the world to me. I think sometimes love shows up in different forms in forms that we don't expect it to show up. And we want to embrace love in whatever way it appears. And also be accepting of love if it shows up not how we expected. where we are for about five more breaths. And then just unwind through your body. You can land the feet and just rock the knees from side to side. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, the last... Um, thing that I want to invite you to do is a little bit of a heart opener. So you can use a, a bolster or a block. I'm going to use a block um, because I kind of just like the edge that that takes me to. So what I'm going to do is place the block. You can use books as well. You're going to place this object 
um, underneath your shoulder blades and then let the back of your head rest. Extend the legs. There's one more poem that I want to share with you that's been on my mind. It's a Rupi Carr poem. She says, love does not look like a person. Love is in our actions. Love is giving everything we can, even if it's just the bigger slice of cake. Love is understanding we have the power to hurt one another. But we will do everything in our power to make sure that we don't. Love is figuring out all the kind sweetness that we deserve. And when someone shows up, but their actions seem to break you rather than build you, Love is knowing who to choose. Stay there for a couple more breaths. And then I want to invite you to just lift off of the block or the bolster. Really slowly move to lay all the way back down flat on your mat. And if you wanna grab a blanket or a pillow or headphones or anything to set yourself up for the meditation, now would be the time. Be quiet my music and switch you over to Callum. Thank you very much, Alex. What a beautiful, beautiful poem. It was so touching that interestingly, like today, actually the meditation that I want to run is about self-love self-forgiveness actually, mainly like self-love. So um, I really, really could resonate. And thank you so much for sharing that. I'm gonna share, make sure you're comfortably laying down or you're leaning against the wall. You have your headsets on, have your blankets on. Someone asked me, uh, what are the results actually for this regular classes, especially on Sundays, on weekends? The more we practice what we've been doing and what we are going to do from now on, especially, the more we are regulating, digesting our flight and, and fight and flight um, nervous system, the more we regulate it, the more we are shifting the energy. The more we shift the energy, we are changing the reality around ourselves. And again, the more we change the reality, the more we are going to manifest our desires. So that would be the all like ultimate result of this beautiful Sunday session with you beautiful souls. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. Let me share share the music at the background. We're gonna do this beautiful meditation together. Um just to relax. Beautiful. Perfect. I would like you to take a deep breath in and out. A couple of more times, take a deep, normal breath in. Focus on the fact that 
you're giving yourself the permission to focus on you, making yourself the first priority. Because there is nowhere else you need to be and there is nothing else you need to be doing right now. So take a deep breath in and out. For the next three breaths, I want you to hold it when I ask you to hold it and make your exhale longer than the previous one. So let's together take a deep breath in and hold it for three seconds, three, two, and one, and exhale as much as you can. Beautiful. One more time, let's take a deep breath in together. Hold it further, reach the stillness, and sound. Amazing. One last time. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Feel the stillness at the top. And make it all beautiful exhale. Amazing. And now bring back your breathing to its normal rhythm. Place your hands on the sides. And in a moment, I'm going to count down from 10 to 0. See yourself as standing at the top of a beautiful stairs. Any image, any scene, let it come to you vividly and clearly. As you look down from the stairs, you can see your soft, comfortable, a fluffy bed waiting for you in order to lay down on it. And as I start counting down, see yourself walking the stairs step by step. And with every step, as you walk down, you will go deeper and deeper into your relaxation. And at the count of zero, you will lay down on that bed at the bottom of the stairs, feeling completely and deeply relaxed. So let's just start walking now, step by step. Ten. Nine. You're going deeper and deeper into a beautiful relaxation state. Eight. Seven. Deeper and deeper. Five. Four. Feeling really relaxed, completely relaxed. Three. Two. Lay down on that bed and be completely and totally relaxed. 
relaxed now. Perfect. As you're laying down there, I would like you to have your attention or allow yourself to concentrate on your toes right now. Feel a nice, warm, comfortable sensation coming up from your toes and covering all of your body and with every part of the body that I mentioned, you will go even deeper into beautiful state of a deep relaxation. This warm, comfortable sensation coming up from your toes all the way up to your ankles. Your knees around your thighs, around your hips. Just feel your whole legs are getting warmer and heavier than ever. This warm sensation goes around your abdomen, your lower back. Feel all the stiffness, all the tension in your lower back are releasing now. And it's relaxing you. This one sensation goes all the way up to your stomach, your middle back. Feel your chest is getting filled with this warm and beautiful sensation. Your breathing is getting steadier and more. Your shoulders are completely relaxed. And this warm sensation goes down to your arms, covering your hands, your fingers, and it's relaxing you even more. Your body is feeling completely heavy and relaxed now. So heavy, so relaxed that you feel your body is floating right now. So heavy and so relaxed that you can't feel your body is stuck to that bed that you're laying down on it. So heavy, deeply relaxed that you notice your body doesn't feel like it's there. This warm, comfortable sensation keep going on all the way up around your neck. Back of your neck. 
your jaw. Your jaw is completely relaxed and unclenched. Around your mouth, so relaxed, so peaceful. Your eyes are getting covered with this warm, comfortable sensation and your eyes are getting warmer and heavier than ever. So heavy that they're completely shut, they're completely glued. And the more you try to open your eyes, the harder it becomes. this warm sensation goes around your forehead, top of your head, back of your head, so heavy, so relaxed that you don't even feel your body is there anymore, it's a beautiful state of stillness, where all the answers, all the wisdoms lay down there. It feels so good to relax like this. A beautiful and wonderful feeling of a complete peace and a total relaxation. where nothing else matters except you and your own love. to begin to call to mind any part of yourself that you have held on a judgment, maybe judgment in the past, maybe a thought pattern or a behavior. Maybe it was a choice you made or something you said that you wish you could have done it in the something that you wish you could take it back maybe. Maybe a time where you felt you could have handled something way much better. Give your permission to look at it from the place of a total curiosity. Be the observer. Watch any emotions and feelings that coming up from there. Watch the stories behind it. The stories you have told yourself about those situations, those patterns, or the judgment in the past. Let them come up. Let them deliver their message to you. Amazing. 
gently as an observer let me go. And at this point, offer yourself forgiveness, compassion and love knowing that you're doing the best that you could at that time and at this time as well that you're doing great no matter what and now as we move into the silent part of this meditation, continue this journey on your own, calling to mind any parts of yourself that you hold the judgment and giving the unconditional love, acceptance and forgiveness. Perfect. As we are starting our day or our evening, let these following powerful intentions and affirmations sink in. My intentions are powered by love. I intend to see goodness around me in everyone and everything. I intend for today to invite peace and calmness within myself. Today I intend to be centered, to be grounded. Today, I intend to create the change I want to see in my life. Today, I intend to love myself more than yesterday. Today, I intend to know that everything is working out for my highest good and for my best. I intend to let myself and others free. I intend to forgive and express gratitude to everything and everyone around me. I intend to believe in power of self-love. I intend to honor my legacy. And 
thanked to know that all the narratives are unfolding for me and I welcome I intend to be assured that today is a beautiful day. Feel free to continue napping, sleeping if you're feeling right. That's absolutely normal. And again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. 